So today I'd like to talk about a book that I've recently finished, On Grand Strategy by John Lewis Gaddis. I picked it up because uh, it caught my attention, and you know the review said it's a master class in strategic thinking. And so, uh, you know, it's something that's always interested me. I gave it a read, and I discovered that it's full of information and principles that are of enormous value to anyone who's a serious systems architect, engineer, or modeler. For example, some of the key concepts within the book are the discussion of the hedgehog with the single focus on unified theories versus the fox approach, which is more tactically flexible. And there's, there's, that's discussed at some length. But there's a lot of great heuristics in here such as adapting ends to the available means, aligning your aspirations and capabilities, building your culture to elevate the available means to let you do more in the long term, using checklists not commandments, and not forging contingent events into a chain because if everything doesn't go right, the plan implodes. And finally, there's a lot of talk of tethering, which is effectively using heuristics to anchor key strategic points. So a lot of the concepts I'm talking about on this page are things that I've inadvertently stumbled on or come to on my own as I've worked out my approach to architecture and modeling. And I would think that if you've been watching this video series, you'd recognize a lot of these principles, you know, perhaps stated slightly differently. So this book is solid gold when it comes to crystallizing your thinking as far as leading a transformation in an organization to a model-based systems architecture and engineering capability. Here's an example just drawn from page 178. And I had talked about friction myself in... Uh, the 787 versus Airbus um, book chapter that I contributed to a book on complex systems. And so I was pleased to see the discussion of friction from Clausewitz here, which is why actual outcomes deviate from the theoretical, and experience is the lubricant that overcomes friction. And that was a quote that was new to me. But what I really liked was the discussion of how Clausewitz felt that you had to prune theory and keep it close to its proper soil experience. And that you know we shouldn't be trying to deduce universal laws that govern every single case, but uh, those who never arise above anecdotes are also don't have a way to to deal with things because they never understand the general factors that govern. And this is really getting at the heart of my pro method anti process philosophy and the need to empower uh, architects and modelers to execute the system model in what's best for their program. In many ways, it's like a military action in which the commander is empowered to do what's right to accomplish the objectives. So enormous similarities here. But there's also a, a great discussion of using theory as training, and that it's so you don't start fresh every time, but have it well ordered and, and it's used to educate the commander, or in our case, the architect. But you don't want to necessarily hold the person's hand for the rest of their life. That the theory is there as a guide, but we've empowered the architect or modeler, you know, in, in terms of uh, of our discipline by giving them a proper grasp of theory. I absolutely love this discussion that you don't get into trouble when you embrace too much theory as a beginner, but when you cling to it, as you become more experienced, and it just becomes an excuse why people fail. And you know, again, this is all just drawn from one page or two in the book. So if you are a serious practitioner of architecture and modeling and you're engaged in transforming your culture and your uh, organization, I can't recommend this book enough. So Grand Strategy by John Lewis Gaddis, well worth your time. Uh, it's my second favorite book right after Design Design by Frederick Brooks. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.